last year, FIO was uh, commissioned commissioned ISM to prepare a report that was leading to a nominal framework for MBS in agriculture. And I was involved as the lead author of that report and it's now under review as well. Uh, and I wish to recognize my co-authors in the team here below my name on the front page. And today I want just to share the structure of the framework that we arrived at. And as a keynote, I also want to deviate a little bit with some questions for the panel and the audience uh, on discussion on taking MBS forward. So slide two, please. In short, uh, MBS has evolved from the eco-based approaches promoted by IUCN. And as this word cloud tree shows, there are so many concepts and terminologies uh, that are very, very similar. Uh, so now that MBS is considered an umbrella approach, perhaps more than, than, a, than a concept uh, for eco-based approaches. And that means it's complementary and shouldn't be seen as competing with other concepts. And I think the same goes for the, the framework that we are proposing here. It's work in progress. So we did a literature review of 3,500 abstracts and it showed that MBS practices often are called MBS when they're used in urban and wetland ecosystems. Uh, less than 1% of those examples that we looked at actually concerned rural and agriculture contexts. So this is an attempt also to fill that gap in adding it in agriculture contexts. And for sure, if we had done that review this year, we would have seen a very different turnout, I think, as practices also now are reconfiguring themselves as MBS. Slide three, please. So many of us are perhaps used to the trade-offs between production and conservation and looking at them as two opposites. And hopefully we can agree all that the role of vegetation is underutilized nevertheless. And here we go from uh, the focus on the grain to the plant with its roots and canopy, its interactions to actively contributing to improving ecosystem functions. When we prepared this work in the report, we also took inspiration from Egermont and others, and they help us to pay attention to the possibility to imagine and design and manage new agroecosystems. So that could be new or unconventional uses of agriculture plants and organisms. Slide four, please. So bringing all this to the framework uh, for nature-based solutions in agriculture, we viewed uh, nature-based solutions as solutions to specific problems in the landscape. And we reduced that to four primary purposes where natural processes are used to improve ecosystem functions of environment that have been altered by humans for agriculture purposes. Benefits to people is also fundamental. It's a given in here, just that it's not really visible on that screen. Uh, First, the main purpose uh, is on the crop production, where we look at sustainable practices. Uh, the second purpose is more to mechanically control water and soil. This is where civil engineering and green engineering and green infrastructure comes in. The third purpose is on environmental restoration, amelioration. Uh, it's about removing toxic pollutants from agriculture and non-agriculture land, water and air also using agriculture plants. And lastly, for agrobiodiversity or biodiversity, this may be as much as restoration as conservation. The ambition here really is also to connect mosaics of nature-based practices in the landscape. So in the report, we have listed 53 practices and most of them will be familiar to everyone in this audience. But I wanted to draw the attention to the green infrastructure and the amelioration part as we go a little bit perhaps beyond the conventional agronomist or engineering conventional use of plants. Slide five. So this package uh, framework also has a planning tool to it and it should help planners really to progress towards positive impacts. <clears throat> for people and the environment. So here, the ambition is to, to look at this framework and sort of fly through the, <laughs> fly through the landscape 
and sequencing these interventions over time, find a way to start combining practices and connecting them, the small sustainable patterns into bigger ones to gradually connect landscapes over spatial scales. Slide six, please. So we have uh, the next slide. So here we have a few regional, we've had a few regional conservation uh, consultation workshops in, in Asia and some of the criticisms that we have received and that I really appreciate from these consultations is a concept fatigue. We hear that MBS is yet another Western-based theory. It's got little proof of evidence yet, especially from the developing world. Uh, it's potentially even conflicting with developing contexts where the, perhaps the public interest or investment capacity and priorities for environmental protection differ from, from those in the West. And concepts also don't seem to have time to mature before another one is thrown on the table by donors or even by us in the CJR. So systems approaches like MBS or ecosystem-based adaptation really require multiple sectors to collaborate. And often these are actors who have never talked to each other or rarely. So they really need time to find their modes of working together on these concepts and developing them for their own. Um, just to finish off with some of the positive side, I think it's really exciting to look at these practices that we're collecting and that we're working with uh, on a daily basis. Some of them potentially new income generating opportunities. Um, in this project with FAO and ISOM, we also tested the framework and some planning tools to develop project proposals uh, to generate those missing evidence from the four policymakers and investors in Southeast Asia. Slide seven, please. And as the global funds are becoming available for MBS, I just really want to uh, start talking a little bit about what MBS is and what it isn't. And I think my question to end this talk really is about if we agree, and I think we do, that MBS is one way forward, what can we learn from our earlier experiences to avoid that NBS becomes yet another, another hijacked greenwash concept? Uh, can we make it a longer term commitment so that it gets time to mature uh, and integrate in, in countries' policies uh, so that they can actually see it implemented on the ground before another concept comes and gets the attention? And with the urgency that this planet is in now, I really wish to finish off with these beautiful words from Wangari Matai and uh, wish you all strength in the important work that you are doing out there. Thank you.